November, Cowboys Nation. It is a new month and hopefully some new optimism surrounding the Dallas Cowboys as we welcome you into special edition. The Cowboys now three and four. They lost before the bye week to the Detroit Lions and then after the bye week to the San Francisco 49ers. He's Isaiah Stanback. We've got Barry Church and Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us. And the Cowboys losing two straight. Barry, it hasn't looked pretty these last couple of games. What's your overall optimism that the Cowboys can turn things around moving forward. Well, you know, with the Dallas Cowboys, I don't have great optimism going forward. I mean, when you cannot stop the run as a defense and you cannot run the football as an offense, to me, that's not a recipe for winning games in the National Football League. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to agree with Barry on this one. I don't think that this team necessarily has an identity right now. And for uh, for an organization, whenever you're struggling, if you do have an identity, that's something you can lean on. Right now, the Cowboys are just trying to, trying to figure out who they are. Uh, one out of three ain't bad. I'm up. I got all optimism. Okay. This team, Atlanta, they give us 139 yards rushing, 4.4 average. Cowboys run the ball. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that optimism and about that matchup with the Falcons moving forward. But there was one piece of optimism from the San Francisco game. C.D. Lamb found his way back into a wide receiver one role. Was it enough, Nate, to kind of show you that C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott are back on the same page? It, 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 yes, because they, they, they second half, they was able to find C.D. in the second half, and that's what they couldn't do. So coming out of the bye week, Coach McCarthy figured out a way to get him free in the second half. Yeah, they found out a way to get the ball in his hands, but I still think there was a lot of missed opportunities. There was still miscommunication in that game, and I still don't think that they're as in sync this year as they have been in recent years. Yeah, when it comes to this connection, I don't believe it's back yet. I need, I need to see more than just one half, and I need to see this connection going when the competitive part of the game is going fire, not when the other team has left the foot off the gas. So to me, I need to see this for all four quarters for me to believe that this connection is back on track. Yeah, and of course, the Cowboys really had that connection down the stretch against San Francisco, but really it's been in the first half in every other game this exactly. year. So you need to see it all put together, completely understand that. Mike McCarthy's the one trying to put it all together. Here's what he had to say after the game. You know, there's two sides of that too, you know, um, you know, as far as the, you know, the protection and the pass rush and all that. So it, it's not like it's, you can just call a scramble, you know, you know so, um, and, and then the triple option, you know, opportunities, you know, we haven't called them as much this year. So, and, and I think that's also ties into the, into the run game too. So I, I think, you know, when I'm going with this opportunities are down. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't have a number every week that I'm trying to hit with them. That's for sure. So that's another element that's been missing from this Dallas offense. Dak Prescott running the football. He's only had 24 rushing yards through the first seven games of the year. By far the lowest on pace. He's actually on pace to have fewer rushing yards than Tom Brady did in his final season. Isaiah, you're a former dual threat quarterback. How important is it for Dak Prescott to run the football and open things up? It's important for Dak Prescott to take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. I'm not sure that you want him to be a dual threat quarterback in the sense of like a Lamar Jackson. Um, but as Double J, Mr. Jones has said uh, on, the, on the fan this week, uh, he doesn't really want him crossing the line of scrimmage too often. Can't find a way to get him uh, some opportunity, get him rolling in the right direction, because at least in that Seattle game last year, that's the first one that comes to mind mm -hmm. for me. They ran the football with that's Dak true. Prescott, and it helped them win a high-scoring affair. Of course, the, the Cowboys have not been able to run the football effectively, whether it's Dak or anybody moving forward. When we come back on Special Edition, Isaiah Stanback is going to break down the film room of what's going on uh, in terms of how the Dallas offense can have success. But we'll talk about Kirk Cousins and how he brings an element to this Atlanta offense right after this. Special Edition, presented by AT&T is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Reliant, official energy provider of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, invest like your icons with Blockchain.com. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Yeah, they're a really good offense. Um, you know, Kirk Cousins has been in the league for forever, you know, so, you know, he's a great quarterback. They got a lot of great weapons at wide receiver. Uh, the running back is phenomenal. So, you know, we just got to do a good job. Uh, they like to throw the ball a lot. Um, they can run the ball too. So, you know, we just got to do a good job, um, play the calls that's called and, you know, get the job done. 
Trayvon Diggs knows the challenge ahead of this Dallas defense. They face some of the best offenses in the NFL, like Detroit, like Baltimore. But again, this Atlanta Falcons team presents a challenge, and of course, they're going to do so in a number of different ways. As we welcome you back in to special edition here from the star in Frisco, Isaiah. Uh, I, I know you're a, a mobile quarterback. We just talked about it a minute ago. I want to stay for a second. I want to start with Barry Church. Okay. Because he, he's the defender. This mm. is true. This is how true. does this offense, how does this offense scare you from a defender standpoint? Because Isaiah loves the weaponry. You probably don't as much. Yeah, it, it strikes fear into opponents when you have so many weapons on the outside that you have to deal with. You got a Kyle Pitts. You got a London. You got a Mooney out there. Not to mention the dual threat running backs that they have in the backfield. And Kirk Cousins has just become more and more comfortable since returning from his Achilles injury. This offensive line is doing a great job protecting him. Ten touchdowns and just three interceptions, so he's taking care of the football. But when you talk about those weapons on the outside, it should scare a lot of defenses out there. It scares defenses because there's not one aspect of the game that you feel confident that you can take away. You talk about the running back room, you got B. John Robinson, you talk about the tight ends, Kyle Pitts, you talk about the receivers, Drake London, Mooney. So every, every, every position group, you have somebody that you have to be concerned about, so you really can't focus all your attention. Oh, and by the way, they have a solid offensive line. They have a great offensive line that understands the, the scheme that Coach uh, Zach Robinson is trying to run, whether they want to run the ball, whether they want to uh, pass the ball, whether they want to run screens. This offensive line is capable of doing it all. And uh, this led by one and only Kirk Cousins. Well, and we've talked about the Detroit Lions offensive line and what they brought to the table a couple weeks ago against this Dallas Cowboys team. They had three first rounders up front. Atlanta has four first rounders Ooh. up front. So when that comes to fruition, how effective have they been running the football when you've got Tyler Algier back behind the, the, the line of scrimmage? But of course, B. John Robinson leading the way, Nate. They, they did. They just dominate. You don't have to worry about a lot of deuce blocks. They can take on blocks one on one. They don't have to uh, turn to a certain guy, uh, a, a great edge rusher. They're able to block one on one. When your offensive line can block one on one and dominate, that just frees up everybody else to do their job, especially that tight end, Kyle Pitts. Yeah, you heard Big Nate talking about these guys creating running lanes. I mean, this is a two-headed monster at running back. Dallas has had their dose of that this year. Uh, you brought up Detroit. Uh, obviously, Sonic and Knuckles over there with <laughs> with those two, Gibbs and Montgomery. This, these guys are just as just as dangerous. Uh, not not necessarily the big play aspect, unless you allow B. John Robinson to get outside the tackle box. But these guys are physical and they're downhill runners, and they're fall for five yards at a time. And what does defense for the Dallas Cowboys has to do to be able to contain this rushing attack? Because you've got to let your linebackers on that second level free flow. We haven't seen those guys be able to run sideline to sideline without having to go through 300 pounders since the Cleveland game. All right, that defensive line, they're not making plays out there. So at the very least, you got to hold up those linemen so they can't get to the second level. So Overshone, Kendricks, they can do what they do best and use their best traits, which is their speed, and they be able to get downhill. This defensive line has got to help that second level out. Got to have a way to do it. Now, the weapons on the outside are just as dangerous as B. John Robinson. Mm. They've got Drake London. They've got Mooney outside. Even Kyle Pitts has had a good year so far. Barry, which one worries you the most? The one that worries me the most has got to be the Kyle Pitts uh, matchup, whether he's going against linebackers or safeties. I understand you got Diggs on the outside. I believe he can handle that big physical Drake London. I believe Jordan Lewis can handle Mooney in the slot as well. But what scares me, especially after what we saw last week with George Kittle, is Kyle Pitts over the middle doing those crossing routes. I believe this safety unit as well as these linebackers, that is a mismatch nightmare and they've got to find a way to contain that big man. Yeah, I totally agree with you in terms of Kyle Pitts. When you talk about trying to take away Drake London and possibly needing to double team him, then you're leaving one safety that's responsible for Kyle Pitts. And this dude is too big. He's too fast. He's too versatile to try to put one guy on him. Hey, but hope is not lost here because this offense is really, really good. But there's some opportunities on the defensive side of the football. And when we come back here on Special Edition, Isaiah is going to break it down as we go into the film room. How can this Cowboys offense get back on track against Atlanta and the Falcons defense? This segment was brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. Here's the thing, Cowboys fans. The month is now November. We've turned the calendar. October's in the rearview mirror. The Cowboys might be at three and four, 
but there's still a lot of football left to be played. The chill has just now started to settle in the air and starts to feel like football weather here in Texas again. So I want some optimism. I okay, think, let's talk about that. it. I want to talk about this matchup. The mm -hmm. Cowboys passing attack, actually one of the best in the NFL in terms of Some yards per game right now. Yeah. But then you've got a, an Atlanta defense that really presents a couple of opportunities, right? Oh, I love opportunities, Kyle. Just for this Cowboys team, how do they take advantage of Atlanta? Well, let's talk about it. What are the things that impede your ability to have success in the passing game? Usually, it's the pass rush. Yeah. Well, guess what? The Atlanta Falcons are at the bottom of the league in terms of QB pressures. What about the secondary? Oh, okay, well, they have some names out there, but they are the worst. Well, I don't say they pressure the least amount in terms of the line of scrimmage at, with their defensive backs. These guys play more off coverage than anybody. So, no pass rush and free releases at the receiver position opportunities. Let's look at it right here. Okay, I want you guys to pay attention to the bottom of your screen. This dude right here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We already played Pittsburgh. His name is George Pickens. He's kind of a dude, right? He's pretty good. He's pretty doggone good. Okay, this man right here on him is by the name of AJ Terrell. He's pretty good. First this, rounder. Yeah, first rounder. This guy Jesse Bates back here. He's kind of a dude as well. So you would think you have two dudes versus one dude. You'll put some pressure on him, right? Sure. No, no, oh. no. We, I just told you that they play <laughs> off coverage, Kyle. So these guys are not going to touch him. They're going to let George Pickens run up here and run a free, unimpeded corner route for a big play. Let's watch it play out. No hands at the line of scrimmage. Cover two shell right here on this bottom half. All right, we'll pause it right there. Right here when he takes this thing in, right? We just went here, we went up. Now he gave him a little nod, all right? And when he gives him the nod, where are the eyes of Bates? Whoop, whoop, uh -oh. right? Going that way, when his eyes go that way, I go that way for a completion. <laughs> Let's take a peek at it. Boom, play it through. I get the safety turn around. These are all pro players that are playing from off coverage will allow big plays. So there's one opportunity in yep. a wide open spot. Wide open. Wide open. And the fact that they didn't even touch didn't and, and press or do anything to one of the best receivers in football is significant. But this isn't the only indication. That was year, or that was week one. That was their opening Correct. matchup. They've got another one against NFC East foe Philadelphia. Yeah. What about Devontae Smith? What happens in the red zone? Well, let's look at it right here, okay? So right here, you have the safeties. Okay, there's going to be covered two. Responsible for that, responsible for that, responsible here, I'm responsible and they, there. They run a lot of too high shell. They run a lot of too high shell, right? And the weakness of a too high shell is where? Middle of the field, okay? So if you have a three receiver set, one, two, three receivers, okay, who's going to be responsible for the middle man? Well, it's going to be this middle linebacker. And typically, he's the guy who wants to get his hands on him. He wants to come out here and put hands on the number three receiver, right? No, Devontae Smith says, no, nah, I'm going to give you a little ooh-wee, get the safety to turn his shoulders that way, and he's going to cross the face for an easy touchdown once again. Another big play for our opposing offense. You guys are going to see him right in the slot. Linebacker is right there, doesn't touch him, runs the route right over the top of him, finds a hole in the middle of the two-high shell, easy touchdown in the red zone. Good throw from Jalen Hurts in the back of the end zone because it wasn't a, a huge window. But that's they the opportunity. closed it in, but that's the amount of yep. time that it takes to find a receiver like that. So, mm. CeeDee Lamb is going to go up against these guys this week, mm. not only in the too high shell, not only when they decide to play off coverage, but they do like to mix in a little bit of man. How does CeeDee Lamb have success out of the slot? Oh, well, let's look at it. Okay, when you start going into bunch, how many receivers do we have? One, two, three receivers. How many defensive backs do they have? Okay, well, let's go ahead and count that up. One, one, two, three, four guys. Ah. Oh, so it's a numbers game, okay? But these guys are playing with what? There's space, 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 right? All these guys are giving too much space. So what happens when you're in a bunch? Go ahead and run the motion. Okay, it creates confusion. This man did have that guy. He doesn't go all the way across. Now you see him bump down, and now this is where the miscommunication happens. You guys pause it right there. He just threw his hand up. When he threw his hand up, that was his way of communicating to the guy behind him and says, okay, now you have my man. Well, who? what man is that? Let's play it through. Okay, now all of a sudden, I'm going to take him, pause it. That's my guy, okay? This is a safety that's trying to rob the crossing route if he decides to come over. And now there's confusion between these two guys right here in terms of if they're going to take number one or take number two, okay? All right, so as we play it out, there's confusion. I turn my back. I don't know if I have him or I don't know if I have him, right? By taking that advantage, now I'm able to run an over route, unimpeded once again, over the top of the coverage and find the hole right here versus this single high shell. Boop. Take that all day long. If you don't touch me at the line of scrimmage, if you don't touch me in the middle of my route, and you allow for me to find the hole, there's going to be opportunities not only for C.D. Lamb, but Jalen uh, Tolbert, uh, for, uh, for uh, Devontae, Devontae Turpin, Turpin yeah. right? anybody else that wants to run routes because they're not pressuring you at the line of scrimmage, and 
Dak has all day to throw the ball. Hey, maybe there's an opportunity here. You can learn from the film. Maybe we'll see some three wide receiver sets. It worked out on those last two plays specifically. Let's see if Mike McCarthy employs that on Sunday. When we come back on Special Edition, the Cowboys making an impact in the community yet again. The National Medal of Honor Museum bringing some students and bringing some veterans together at AT&T Stadium. This segment was brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. Welcome back into special edition from the star in Frisco and of course around this time every single year the NFL and the Dallas Cowboys salute to service thanking all those who have given time and sacrifice to be in our armed forces and of course given their sacrifice individually and as a community Arlington ISD had an opportunity as a community to sit down with the National Medal of Honor Foundation at AT&T Stadium. Here's Nicole Hutchison with more. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? It was a full day of fun and learning to kick off the NFL Salute to Service celebration. Over 4,000 Arlington ISD students joined online and about 900 took over AT&T Stadium to join in for some good conversation. Courage, commitment, and integrity, the three values focused on in Jake Ferguson, NASA Chief Astronaut and Medal of Honor recipient, Chief Britt Slabinski, and Chris Cassidy, the National Medal of Honor Museum president, encouraging each and every student how they can implement those in their everyday life. Kind of remembers when I was in their shoes, you know. Uh, I was a little chubbier than I am now. However, you know, I, I think I would have needed that message um, to be a better friend, you know, a better son, better sibling. And I think that's important to learn that at a young age because, you know, when you're young, you're at that point where you're kind of deciding which way you want to go in life. When you're at those young ages, like you and I were, right? I mean, someone taught us the way. Someone showed us the way. I'd say, this is how to be. And th this is really what we're doing here. We have to help them show them how to, how to go down the right path, well, how to make decisions, how to be good citizens, good human beings. The words are almost self-explanatory, but integrity, if you're people, you want people to believe you in your word, and when you say you're gonna do something, you do it, uh, and they believe you, they don't think you're lying or you're misrepresenting the truth, and, and courage, um, is represented every single day. You know, it takes courage to stand up to, if you kind of don't quite think something's right, it's hard to say to your friends who think it is, I am not so sure I'm comfortable with this. It takes courage, that's a hard thing to do. And getting that across to young people uh, is really a core part of our mission at the Medal Honor Museum. One, two, three. <laughs> Since the launch of the campaign since 2016, the NFL's reached about 2 million students. Well, with the help of the Dallas Cowboys, the National Medal of Honor Museum, and EverFi, they look to continue to inspire more. Reporting here for Special Edition at AT&T Stadium, I'm Nicole Hutchison. How cool of a tradition has it become? The character playbook along with salute to service, serving the community and serving our veterans at the same time and showing that character really does matter. When we come back here on special edition, it's back to the gridiron. The Cowboys taking on the Falcons this week. How does Dak Prescott and his Cowboys team turn things around and find some optimism with our keys to the game next? Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. And to watch more Dallas Cowboys content on your connected TV, download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Wrapping things up here on Special Edition, we've got Isaiah Stanback, Barry Church, and Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Isaiah, keys to the Cowboys getting the win against Atlanta. Cowboys have to get a takeaway. I don't care if it's a fumble or an interception. You have to take away their momentum in that building. You got to make Kirk Cousins uncomfortable. If you allow him to have time back there, he will pick apart this defense. You got to get after the quarterback. Time of possession is going to be key. Offense, you got to control it. Keep your defense off, 
off the field with all those great weapons. All right, Nate, it's a noon kickoff on Fox on the road in Atlanta. Who gets the win this weekend? We get the win by one. We need uh, Turpin to go 99 yard kickoff return. Oh, oh yes. get a little yeah. special team sprinkled in. I like it. I like it. Jury's still out on the Dallas Cowboys, but it'll be a fun one this week against the Atlanta Falcons. We'll see you next week on Special Edition.